but really the question I'm going to ask you now is how bad do you want that goal? <laughs> well, I don't, don't think, think we, I don't think, I don't, I don't think we want it bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> But, but see what I just goal. did? I just picked something arbitrarily, and I don't actually know if it's good for me or not. I don't know if it's achievable or not. It's like when people say, I want a million dollars. And you're like, okay, cool. You want a million dollars. Perfect. You're just picking something. Well, I mean, I think that's what's really cool about goal setting as well is that it's that deep, heavy conversation you have with yourself, you know? Because mm -hmm. not only are you trying to create a goal, but you're also kind of like figuring out who you are, the way that you think. It's happening. It's happening. Here you are. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. So Neil is uh, the head coach of the gym that I attend, and I have never been fit in my life. I have never been athletic. I have never been fit, but I started going there in June. We connected in the fall, and then uh, maybe, a, what, a week or two ago, you came up to me and you said, I want to talk to you about goal setting because I am passionate about goal setting. Yeah. And so, you know, very easily, it's very easy for him and I to just start talking about the gym, but just to fill everyone in, if we talk about fitness, if we talk about the gym or the types of goals you might want for your body or your health or how you feel, these can be applied to any part of your life. Absolutely. Okay. So talk to me about goal setting. Why are you so passionate about it? So goal setting, I, so I feel like everyone goes about their day and they have their to-do list and they have things they want to achieve, but I feel like breaking it down and actually looking at what your goal is and how you're going to work towards it. Not only like it holds you accountable to what you want to achieve. So instead of saying, I want to be healthy, mm. well, what does that look like to you? Like, cause your healthy looks different than my healthy, right? So being able to break it down and being able to understand how to, so you create a visual image in your head and it's something that you can actually go and work towards. I think it's really important to stay focused on the visual of it and then you break it down. So I think it's, I'm very passionate about it. It's very important to me because it builds you up for success in the future. Do you, do you think, so you've been doing this for many years and obviously yeah. you're, you're, you're in, um, I mean, for most of the things we do, we either hit a goal or we don't hit a goal. Do you think one people even think about this? Do you think they do it well? And do you think they stay with their goals? I believe people have the best intentions to work towards a goal, but they don't necessarily challenge their thinking. They don't think bigger or better. They keep it simple. They keep it direct. I want to be healthy and that's it. But what does that goal look like? What are the necessary steps you're going to take towards that goal? So I think people think very small about the goals, but really there's so much opportunity to think bigger towards the goal. Where, so where do you start? So, so I, I want to do something. I'm feeling bold in the moment. I'm feeling courageous. Uh, you know, I decide I'm going to make this happen. You know, like I'm going to, I don't know, quit smoking is the old thing people used to talk about, right? Yep. I don't really know anyone who smokes anymore, but anyway, you're going to quit smoking. You're going to, you're going to get fit. You're going to lose 10 pounds. You're going to, uh, you know, go out and ask someone out because you're too afraid to do that. Like, like those are all like, you know, you're feeling bold in the moment. What do you do next? So it's a process called SMART, mm. and I'm, you might have heard about it. A lot mm -hmm. of businesses use it when they look at their, their professional uh, goal setting, but you want to make it specific, you want to make it measurable, attainable, relevant, and of course, timely. Smart goals. Smart goals, exactly. So I want you to take your goal, and I want you to make it smarter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the goal is about breaking the goal and making it more specific and more tangible. Mm. So you want to definitely have, um, you want to have a step-by-step -step on how you're going to work towards the goal. So let's run with uh, quit smoking. Mm -hmm. You want to quit smoking. There's the goal. But how, what are you going to do in order to go and quit smoking? So are you going to reduce your cigarettes or your, your smoking by day? Are you going to go on the patch? Are you going to get hypnotized? And what, what are the steps necessary that are going to get you closer to achieving that goal? And then how are you going to make it relevant? Why is this important to you? There are so many times that you are going to be along your journey, your quick smoking journey, your fitness journey, your eating healthy journey, whatever it may be, and you are going to come to a point where you're like, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. Why am I waking up at 3.45 every morning to go to the gym at 5 a.m.? It sucks. It hurts. No one does this. I'm the only person who thinks this is cool. So when you have that moment to understand why this is relevant to you, is to be able to go back to step one and say, 
oh, oh, this is why I'm doing this. This is the why. You mm-hmm. have a very important why towards your fitness goals, Mark. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so special and so important. So anytime you have a moment of doubt or not wanting to do it, you go back to that, that reason why it's relevant to you. Yeah. And of course, you want your timely at the end. You want to be able to set a deadline for yourself. And I find that by creating the deadline, you're creating a due date. And the due date is not for you. It's for yourself. Like, you know, it, it is for yourself, not for the other person that you're sharing it with. Mm-hmm. And it's about accountability. And it's that, it's that date for you to work towards. For, like, for example, if you're trying to lose weight, I need to know, or you need to know when your deadline or your due date is because that's going to help you make it measurable to break down how much weight you need to lose each week to stay on track to achieve the big goal. But so for me, uh, maybe I, maybe I'm not accountable enough. I don't, I, I always set these, these visions and I find that whether I set a deadline or not, the universe or, or, you know, is either conspiring against me uh, or whatever, but I just find like there's like deadlines are so hit and miss. Yeah. So as long as I'm progressing towards something, if it if I think it's going to take me three months to lose 20 pounds, which I actually know is super, super achievable, but maybe, maybe it's not for when you're starting, you don't think it's achievable. So sure. you're going to say like, okay, I'm going to lose 20, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in X number of months. You may lose it way quicker. You may hit a patch where you don't lose anything at all. Like, isn't, isn't, aren't things random? Like you're just picking a timeline that's super arbitrary. So do, do timelines really help you in your goal setting or is it better just to say like, I'm always going to work towards this and I don't know if it'll take me three months or it'll take me a year or it'll take me two years. But as long as, as long as I'm not losing ground, as long as I'm always moving forward, that's enough. Absolutely. So, I mean, you can go either way, but really the question I'm going to ask you now is how bad do you want that goal? (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't oh think we. God. I don't think I don't. I don't think we want it bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, when that, it just goes right back to yeah, how bad do you want it? Like, how bad do you want to achieve this goal? You know how how important is this to you? What what is the why is it relevant? Right, setting the date is just it's just making your goal that much smarter because now it's very specific, it's very measurable, and there's a time, there's a due date behind it. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you can go about month to month, year to year. But there's no true, like, direct path to get to the goal. You're just kind of, like, floating towards it. But when you set that deadline, it's a hard set deadline. I, this needs to be done. If your boss tells you, I need that email or the paperwork on my desk by Friday at noon, what are you going to do? You're going to get on the desk uh, by Friday you, at noon. You, you, yeah, you're talking to an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, touche, touche. But when someone so sets you a I, deadline, yeah. Jackie, Jackie's like, meet me at the altar. You're like, okay, sure, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Funny story, funny uh, story. Jacqueline, when we were getting married, ran out of uh, our rehearsal dinner in, in a winery, and I had to chase after her and convince her that we should still get married. So. No! <laughs> yeah. Total runaway bride. That's hilarious. Yeah, luckily it was the day before, but she was stressing out, to say oh, the least. Poor thing. Now, keep in mind, my wife was 21 at the time. I was 22 when we were getting married. We were kind of young, but, but I, had to, I had to really jump in there and save, save the deal to, to, to make sure we got married. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. That's actually really funny. But good. I'm glad that she stayed. Yeah. So from, you mentioned my personal goal, so, and I've shared this with you, and I've, I've talked about it online before. So, uh, you know, I, I, my, my grandfather – on my dad's side, died at 32 of a heart attack. And my dad was always worried that he was going to have heart issues, which he doesn't really. Um, and so in the back of my mind, I always thought, you know, like there's maybe this possibility of me dying young and I'm not fit and, and I don't take care of myself that well. And I just didn't think that I could do it. Uh, and then, you know, I went to a conference. I went to a Tony Robbins conference and we were supposed to set these limiting self-beliefs, these things that are holding us back. And I wrote down in my book that, you know, I can't be fit or attractive. Mm-hmm. And then they take us through this exercise where we start to we start to imagine, well, what's the worst thing that can happen to you if you don't change this? You know, if you live this way for the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. And so will your spouse not find you attractive 
or will you lose your marriage or like, what's the worst thing that could happen? And for me, it was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe I won't be there when my kids get married. Maybe, you know, I won't, uh, maybe I'll die young and I'll miss out on all this stuff. Maybe I won't ever meet my grandkids. And so I picked that, you know, like I want to meet my grandkids. That's, that's why I want to get healthy. And that's the big goal. It's not really a smart goal. That's, that's the big goal. The really ego driven goal is I want to be a bathing suit model now, but, but that's, <laughs> also really but that's, cool. uh, that's very different. So that's, that's like, I got my, like, I got the one where people go like, that is super cool. You, you know, wow. You want to meet your grandkids. And I can imagine myself like being handed my little granddaughter or son and meeting them and being like, I worked so hard to meet you. Uh, and then the other side is just like, I just want to have abs and be really thin and, and have people go like, wow, you're attractive. That's <laughs> which is totally different. <laughs> but I think we have both of those, you know, whether you're in business or whether you know, you're, you're trying something new or you're learning something new, you always have the, like the, the big thing, the lofty one. And then you got kind of the ego one that's, that's pushing you along maybe too. Absolutely. So I think also, so you have long-term goals and you have short-term goals. You can both, they can work together, they can work completely separately. But I also think your goal, your actual goal is to live a healthy lifestyle. Your relevancy is meeting your grandchildren. Mm. So you got the R in your smart. So of course it's a smart goal, mm. right? And I mean, we can totally sit down, we can break it down even further and really paint that visual of what that living a healthy lifestyle looks like in order for you to go and meet your grandkids in the future. But it's absolutely, it gets all cohesive, it all falls into each other. I know that you ran a goal setting, um, a goal setting session last week. Yes. Can you kind of share or take us through, or 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 we really was this? Can you kind of take us through like the play by play? Okay. So so I I'm feeling bold. I want to make something happen, or I want to make a change, or I finally have had enough, and I'm like I just can't keep doing this anymore. So I'm at the I'm at the moment. You have to be at the moment where you're ready for what's next. So so what what do we do next? Do you have a pen and paper in front of you? I do. Yeah? Write down your goal. Yeah. Write down my goal. So I got to pick a goal first. Write down. Okay. Anything. So, uh, okay. So, like, here, here's a great goal. Like, uh, I want to – I don't actually have a pen in front of me. Hold on. I do. Here, here I we go. One. Okay. So, perfect. So, so I have my little pen. Um, see, this is, this is a goal that I don't even know if it's achievable, so I'm already doubting. Like, let's say 10% body fat. You want to drop 10% body fat? No, I want to get to 10% body fat. Oh. I don't even know if that's – is that too aggressive? 15%, 12%, 10% body fat, whatever. 10%? Let's do it. I like it. Okay. But, but see what I goal. just did? I just, I just picked something arbitrar or arbitrarily, and I don't actually know if it's good for me or not. I don't know if it's achievable or not. It's like when people say, I want a million dollars. And you're like, okay, cool. You want a million dollars. Perfect. You're just picking something. <laughs> You don't well, know if it's what's achievable or not achievable or anything. Fair. So let's break it down. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Okay. I mean, this is your beat hang. This is your big, hairy, and audacious goal. Yes. Like, this, is like, this is like the big one. So let's make it measurable. So besides dropping down to 10% body fat, I want you to write down three or more points that are going to help you create milestones into um, to achieving this goal. Okay. What, so what does that mean? So you want to get to 10% body fat. Yes. So I want you to write down what are steps that you are going to take in order to achieve it. Okay. So um, obviously I need to, I mean, in this case, I'm, I'm going to, what, adjust my diet, I guess, further. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I have, um, working out more or differently? <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, you maybe uh, well you work out five times a week, right? You're there yes. five times. Yeah, five or six. Yeah. So as they continue to work out, continue okay. to work out, you're going to create weekly or biweekly weigh-ins, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Or you could do like caliper testing. You're looking body fat, mm -hmm. so you probably get caliper testing done. Okay. So weekly um, caliper testing. Okay, so that's like tracking, basically. Correct. Yeah. So okay. it's going to make sure that you're staying on the right track. Great. You drink a lot of water. Uh, I I do. I could probably drink more. Drink more water. Okay, water. You're creating a step by step for yourself, right? Yeah. So adjust diet. What did I say here? 
continue to work out, weekly caliper testing, and drink more water. Perfect. Perfect. So now that is your measurable. Those are going to be four steps that are going to help you make sure that you're on the right track. Now, I want you to write down the attainable. I, now that we're working towards the school, we have a step-by-step. -step. That's great. I want you to think of barriers that are going to stop you. I want you to mm. acknowledge the barriers now mm -hmm. before they actually happen. So what are a few mm. barriers that are going to stop you from achieving 10% body fat? Okay. Uh, late night snacking. Ooh. <laughs> only, only because uh, I already do keto. I already do intermittent fasting. But even within my, um, even during the day, I'm very, very good. At dinner time, I'm very, very good. It's that little window after dinner, but but before I end before eight p.m. Where where I don't know. I can just go off the rails. Uh oh, uh oh. So okay, so we need. To, okay, that's good to know. So clear yeah. the fridge, clear the cupboards. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that I. Uh, I'm still on keto. It's just, it's just if I'm if I'm trying to like if I'm trying to do a keto diet and say seventeen hundred calories, and I have a prescribed diet, <clears throat> there is this like half an hour window where I can just do another three hundred calories or something. Still have keto food, still staying within ketosis, you know, like still low carb, but you suddenly add an extra salad or you add this all this you know some salami or some other stuff or some cheese, and suddenly you're not hitting your calorie goal anymore. No, it's true. It's true. And, and, it, and it happens very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. It doesn't take very much either, right? Yes. So what's another barrier? Uh, not late night snacking. That's a big one. And you're very aware that you do that and that you fall into that. What's yes. something else? Um, it could be physical. It could yes, be mental. So, so this week is the first time that I've been, that I've, this week and a little bit of last week's the first time we're being sick has really actually affected my workouts. You know, like okay. Wednesday, Wednesday, I was seeing spots on the floor. <laughs> and yesterday I came up to you and I said, you know, like, I just can't run. Like, I just can't, I can't breathe. I can't run. Yeah. Um, today was pretty tough too. And so, uh, yeah, I guess if I get sick for a week or two or like that, then, you know, you lose, you lose, um, momentum. And yep. then I think if I go, like, the reason I work out five times a week or more is because if I stop, I'm worried I'm never going to go back. Fair. Right? Like, okay. So that scares me. <laughs> but, it, but it is scary. Absolutely. It's so easy to fall out of your fitness regime. Yes. And it's not easy getting back into it. I don't care what level of fitness you're at or how much you love the gym or exercise. It's always so easy to fall off. Mm -hmm. So looking at sickness or lack of um, exercise, I'm going to say. Yep. Give me one more barrier. Uh, uh, stress or busy times at work. Busy times at work. Perfect. Yes. When I get really, really stressed out, I move into two ways. I either become someone who's like, uh, the stress motivates my fight or flight, and then yeah. I will like do anything I need to do to save it and make it happen, or I go completely the other way, and I like lock myself in my room and get under the covers and ignore the world, yeah. and, and it's, it's one or the other. <laughs> one or the other, that's amazing. So we're, like, we're all about extremes here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now I want to look at why it's relevant to you. Okay. Why is this goal relevant? This is the reason, this is the why. This is a time where in the future you're working towards this goal and you're like, F this, this sucks. Like, why am I doing this? What is relevant? What is the thing that you can come back to and be like, oh, I'm back on track. That's a good reason. I now, I, I remember why I'm doing this. I got you. I love it. So, cool. so you're what is it? Oh, my why? What is your relevant? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to, I want to meet my grandkids and, uh, I, I, I want to feel it and be attractive. <laughs> I mean, you want to get abs. <laughs> there you go. Yes. And then the be all end all underwear model. Oh, underwear. I said bathing suit model, but you can, we can take it to underwear model. Water, no water. It's like almost <laughs> the same thing. Almost. Okay. Wow. Okay. This is just taking me out of my comfort zone anymore. I love it. Okay. I love I it. I want to be now an underwear model, apparently. Well, I guess it's the natural progression after swimsuit model, right? I'm just taking you to like the next step. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So the last step is timely. Creating a by when. When is your deadline? When is your due date to you? Okay. So um, 
I, I mean, you, people who, who follow along know that I create videos for Instagram and for YouTube. And um, I turned to my camera guy, Steve, who shoots stuff with me. And I said, I said, next spring or summer, uh, I want to shoot this video at my cottage of this cliff. So there's this 40 foot cliff in my cottage. And when I was younger, we used to go and you, you, you jump off this cliff and you like, you know, fall 40 feet into the water. And it's amazing. But, um, when, amazing. You, but when you're up there and you're standing on the edge of this, of this cliff and you're <laughs> looking down, it, it scares, it scares the shit out of you. Like it's, it's terrifying. And so all you can do, all I could do is take a bunch of steps back and then you just start running oh, and God. you don't think about it. You don't think about it. You just run and you jump. And then suddenly you're free falling for like a second or two and then you hit the water and it's exhilarating Yeah. and then you run, you climb back up and the second and the third time and the fifth time and the 10th time, there's no fear. Like the fear is in the first time you jump. Absolutely. But then you go away for a few weeks and if you come back a few weeks later or even the next summer, even though you've done it before, it's completely scary again. Yeah until you jump and then you jump the first time. And so I was telling my friend uh, Evan this about how using this analogy to say that change is really scary and making decisions is really scary. It's like jumping off that cliff. You need to throw yourself into it. And he, and he goes, yeah, but, but the, after you do it, the second jump and the third jump and the fourth jump isn't scary. The second change, the third decision, the fifth decision isn't scary. What introduces fear is when there's a big window of time between you doing it. So you always need to be jumping. You always need to be changing. You always need to be growing. And then the fear won't be there because you're not waiting in between. So I love this concept and idea. And I'm telling Steve, my camera guy, and I was like, okay, next, next summer we're going to the cliff with the camera and we're going to shoot this video on the cliff of this. So I'd like to look good if I'm going to be in a bathing suit on camera. <laughs> that's, Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the gist of it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create this video. I want to look good. So let's say it's June is my goal. June. June when? June 2020. Do you, need, you want to be more specific? <laughs> yeah, give me a date. June 14th. June 14th. You just created a smart goal. So your goal yes. is... You want obviously meet the grandkids. I mean, that's irrelevant. That's, that is the big why. Your mm -hmm. goal is to look good in a swimsuit. You're going to dive off the cliff. Mm -hmm. You know that your barriers are late night snacking, potential mm -hmm. sickness, or being busy at work. Mm -hmm. Your steps in order to achieve 10% body fat, you're going to adjust your diet, maybe a little bit more than you already have. You're going to continue to do your exercise. You're going to be looking at weekly caliper testing to make sure that you're on track. And you're going to drink more water. These are the mm -hmm. four steps that you're going to take. And you can always add on to this later to help mm -hmm. you achieve the 10% body fat. And because you're doing it by June 2020 or June 14th, 2020, you now have set a by when, a deadline. So you have told me, you've told yourself and everyone that's following along, so I'm going to hold you <laughs> accountable now, okay? So it's not sure. just you now. Sure. Does that make you nervous? Uh, no. It, it doesn't, no. but, okay. but, but, uh, listen, sharing goals and actually saying them out loud is, is scary. Um, and hmm, why doesn't it make me nervous? One, I don't know if I'm going to really stick to this. Okay. Why? I just, I, so, so Tony Robbins, let's go back to that said limiting self beliefs first can't be healthy. Can't be attractive. Second was, I'm not a disciplined person. That's, that's the limiting self-belief I told myself. I always gave myself this out, that I'm creative and I'm strategic and I'm, 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 a, you know, I'm more of a mad genius than a, you know, like you, you tell yourself these things, right? You know, especially more artistic or creative people, they feel like being kooky and all over the place is like a magical place to live. I think I let myself off the hook a lot. I don't think that I'm really that disciplined, which is why I do the late night snacking, which is it's like the cycle of like, you know, feeling like um, I can set a goal, but I don't know if I'm going to actually keep the goal, which is why I don't put timelines for things. I feel like I can work through this with you. I feel like I can say it. I feel like I want it. Um, I'm worried that I'm going to let myself off the hook. Okay. Okay. You know what? And that's, enough, that's a barrier. And I, I just wrote that down for you. Your barrier is like letting yourself off the hook. I think that's really important to understand and to acknowledge 
working towards your goals. So that's, mm. that's a huge barrier. And I think that is a, a really great um, breakthrough as self-identifying towards that or towards that reasoning. So you have me to help you keep you accountable. You. <laughs> we do. work closely together. I see you almost every morning, so we can definitely talk about it. I think that's really important. I'm really proud of you just to acknowledge that. <laughs> no, that's a big I, deal. I, I, you know what? I, it's, it's funny because I'm like an open book. If anyone asks me a question, I will tell them almost anything, even if yeah. I shouldn't be telling them stuff. But, um, but when it comes to like the pessimism or the negative side of myself, I'm very self-aware with how bad I am at things. I, I don't believe, I don't believe people when they think I'm good at things. That's, that's something that I'm working on and I'm overcoming and I'm trying to get more positive and better at. But if you wanted me to list out all of my faults, man, I am very self-aware. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that's what's really cool about goal setting as well as that. It's that deep, heavy conversation you have with yourself, you know, because mm -hmm. not only are you trying to create a goal, but you're also kind of like figuring out who you are, the way that you think. I mean, the, the workshop, you're asking about the workshop that I hosted last week, it was quite emotional. I had a few people um, shed tears in the class, not out of frustration or out of fear, but just out of pure, like, having aha moments within themselves, which I think is really special. Like, self-identifying is not an easy thing to do, and you just did it. And I mean, like, it's not, it comes easier to others, but that's a big deal for you to stay, like, I self-sabotage. Like, I don't, I allow myself off back easily. I don't hold mm -hmm. myself accountable. I don't take myself seriously. These are things that I think that help you not only live a better life, but also help you work towards your goals even better. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. I, um, I just, I, I always struggle with the balance between, you know, if on one side is maybe David Goggins. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. You know, no. the guy who's like, you know, when you're at your breaking point, you're actually only at 40%. You're capable uh -huh. of so much more than that. Navy SEAL kind of like, you know, the dude, the dude would run 10 miles on broken, on broken uh, shins by just taping them up. Like Ugh. that, like mm, that side where it's just like, I'm capable of so much more. And my wife is worried that I'm going to hurt myself. And then mm -hmm. on the other, and then the other side where I go, you know what, if I'm sick, it's okay to not kill yourself today. Right? Like maybe I need to take care of myself and practice self love and all of the stuff that people talk about. I just don't know when I don't, I, I just, I, I have to learn or, or figure out when the appropriate time is to, is to be one side or the other. Because I can't Absolutely. live in the middle. I'm an all-or-nothing guy. <laughs> oh, no, I'm right with you. I think that's really cool, too, because it's part of the learning experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling well today. And I know when I see you train, when, I, when you're in my class, you go 150%. Like, there's, no, <laughs> there's no holding you back. Well, but I think you. it's also cool to kind of figure out and kind of see when is an appropriate time to pull back and say, you know what? Today's just going to be my active recovery day. I think mm -hmm. I might realize it was on Wednesday when you said you weren't feeling well. I said, we'll try walking. Walk with an mm -hmm. incline. You don't really do it because you're like you're like you're you're a runner. Like you get up there and you go for it. <laughs> but it's cool to, I guess it's also kind of humbling to be able to pull yourself back a little bit and be like, you know what, I'm not running, but this could be equally as hard, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. The last year because I've so two years ago now, my Jacqueline and I we went to Disney. We we went to Disney with the kids Amazing. and uh, and we we were there and we were looking at the photos and I was, you know, two thirty six at the time, uh, kind of my heaviest. And we're looking at the photos and I was just like, we don't feel good. This is embarrassing. You know, we just don't look good. We don't feel good. Uh, and because we were at Disney for like five days with the kids walking around like crazy, we we're doing tons of walking and all that stuff. And I was like, you know what, we're going to use this, like this five days of just standing and walking and being crazy. This is the jumping off point. This is the end. Like, like when we get back, like we are, we are getting healthy. And, and then I lost a little bit of weight and then, I, you know, took the summer off and then lost a little bit more weight and then took some time off. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really only June. Yeah. When I joined this the orange theory, you know, the gym that, that you're, that you're the head coach of, uh, that I really started to see progress and I really started to take it serious. So here's the other question I guess I have when it comes to goals is you have this big, crazy, scary goal. And I, I think that people set goals that are maybe too big to start with. And then, and then they don't see any progress because they're just so crazy and so big. So 
one, does it make sense to kind of set smaller goals that you can just use to prove to yourself that you're capable of even doing anything? Or do you think in your experience it's better to set this big crazy goal that you're always working towards and then use these kind of smaller milestones to prove to you yourself that you're making progress? Great question. I feel that everybody has a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. I think everyone deep down, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, I think they have something inside of them that they want to achieve. I want to meet Beyonce. I want to climb Mount Everest. I want to travel the world. I want to actually see the Sydney Opera House in person. Mm. Everyone has these little goals inside them, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, so if you, especially if you're new to goal setting, start small. Start small, create very short-term goals. I'm going to pay off my credit card debt by the next three weeks. Mm. I'm going to go on a vacation, and it's going to be paid for in advance in the next six months. I'm going to try water skiing for the first time in the summer four months away from now. Do you know what I mean? Like, start small and work your way up. And if you, especially when you follow S-M-A-R-T, it makes it so much more obtainable because you create a visual for yourself. Mm. These little goals will help build the, the confidence, the momentum towards achieving your BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. And sometimes that BHAG can have little goals underneath it, as well as your objectives or your, or your step-by-step to achieving that goal. And again, the long-term and short-term can be done separately. But, sorry, going back to your question, start small. Create small goals for yourself and always have that big goal in the back of your mind or write it down. And, it always, and then you can start creating goals that are slowly going to align you to get you to your big goal. Mm -hmm. Do you set challenges for yourself? Like I've, I take like when I had to transition from working out twice per week to more than twice per week, I set myself, I think a five day challenge. I was like, I'm going to go every day for five days, even if it kills me. Nice. Just, just so that way at the fifth day, I was like, wow, I did it. I didn't think I could do it. This is crazy. It was super hard. But then I, but then I proved to myself I could. And then even though the next week was also just as hard, I was like, well, I did it last week. I can do it this week. Do you set like little challenges? Like, you know, today I'm going to drink 10 glasses of water just to prove to myself that I'm capable of doing it or, or things like that. Um, yes and no. I think I approach it a little bit differently. I am the kind of person where I never allow myself to say, I'll do it later. Mm. So I guess it's, it's, that's an ongoing challenge for me. The second I say, I'll do it later, I go, nope. And I stop everything I'm doing. and I'll do it right then and there. I don't allow it to fall to the next day or the day after that or the day after that. Do you know what I mean? I love that. So I guess that's my challenge. That's something, and then of course, there's like little challenges, like little personal goals in the gym or, you know, getting like my caloric intake in or whatever it may be. But that's my ongoing challenge to myself every day. Mm. Don't allow it for the next day. Do it now. Get it done and over with. It takes two seconds. Why would I say I'll do it later when I can just do it now and not have to do it tomorrow? Right. Yeah, so that's my challenge. I think challenges are great, that. though, because challenges keep you on your toes. They keep you mentally and physically strong, right? Whatever your challenge may be. It's also fun. It's part of the game. It's game of life, right? <laughs> I, hear that, I hear that you went and worked out yesterday in class. I took participated. one and a half yesterday. You took one and a half? Yeah. Okay. So I, I did one that, full uh, <clears throat> Jack Jacqueline told me that that she looked over at you while you were doing the ab stuff. Yeah. And you went <sighs> and just laid down on the floor yep. for a second. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Hey, abs suck. Abs suck. They hurt. And it's funny because my very first personal trainer said to me way, way back in the day, he said um, two things. One, ego, leave it at the door. Two, abs, they're overrated. Like, <laughs> we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> Here's something I learned and I've talked a bit about, but, uh, you know, part of what held me back from, from going to the gym and getting fit was I always heard people talk about how much they liked it. And it's not fun. It's not like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It's not fun. Um, I mean, I, I find things fun about it now, but, <laughs> but I literally, it was a light bulb moment when I realized, Oh, people who go to the gym regularly or work out every day, still don't like it they just do it and i know that that might seem basic but part of me thought that people who who do stuff do it because they like it i don't like it so i'm not going to do it and and it's crazy to me that like do you know what i mean like is this is this normal 
I feel like I, I should teach this in high school. <laughs> I think there's always a component of the gym that nobody likes, right? Right. Who wants to go and get sweaty? Who wants to go lift heavy? Who wants to put themselves through intentional pain? Not many people, right? But I think those, those like myself, those, those people who go to the, or yourself even, people who go to the gym constantly, it's not necessarily that you go for the burn, you go for the pain. You go because you're seeing results. You're one step closer to achieving whatever you want to achieve. And it's that feeling after the workout, the, the natural high that you get addicted to. I think those are the three main things. There's also a social component to the gym, especially at a gym like Orange Theory, where it's very social. You know, mm -hmm. you're, all, you're all dying together. You're all looking at each other in the mirror being like, <laughs> like what is happening right now? Yeah. You finish that workout and you're like, you know what? It was not bad. I'll be here yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And... And so the, the way that I relate this to work is, is, you know, when you're an entrepreneur or when you're running, you know, your own brand or your own business or, you know, you're freelance or whatever it is, it's, you're an army of one, you know, you start to build a team. I, I'm fortunate enough that I've been doing this for 13 or 14 years. You know, I have a team typically fluctuates, but it's anywhere between kind of 15 and 20 people. Um, and so I, you know, I, I have people who can help me run the business and grow the business. But there's still lots of stuff you don't want to do. There's still lots of stuff that you just have to grit your teeth and get through it and make it happen. And it's not fun all the time. You know, sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes you're doing work you don't want to do. But what I learned from those who go to the gym regularly and then now that I do that is what I taught myself. is like, oh, um, making progress on this stuff and growing isn't about just doing the stuff that you enjoy. It's not even only just doing the stuff that you're good at. It's just gritting your teeth and doing it every day and then saying, look, I'm making progress. Mm -hmm. it's, awesome. it's, it's discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Then again, it goes back to being, creating a strong mind, a strong body. I always like to say people who, so this is very gym specific, but I say people who go to the gym and if they can have a really great workout and fit, like push themselves through that physical pain, can have very successful careers or personal lives. Like, no, they really can though, because if you can push yourself to like those limits, running at 12 miles per hour for 60 seconds, whatever it may be, think about like, you can, there's, you can do anything. You can literally do anything. Yeah. I, know, I think it's very exciting. I think it's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. And that was actually the third thing that I told myself, I used to tell myself is I can't do it. And so it was like, I'm not disciplined. I can't do it. And then I won't ever be healthy. Those were the things that, that really over the last year, I feel like I can do it. I can be disciplined if I don't let myself off the hook and I can be healthy. So, and, and once you start to prove to yourself that you can do these things and you feel foolish for thinking that you couldn't, you have these new sets of beliefs. You have these new sets of goals that you can attack and hit. Absolutely. Which, which gives me my next question is once you hit the goal, I find I always get really depressed. Yes. So, so what do you do? do? You just set the next goal right away. <laughs> like, is that the is that the simple answer? <laughs> I, well, essentially. So, I mean, so to, to explain a little bit more, I, there's definitely that downer after achieving goal. You know, you've created this visual, this painting, this picture. I'm going to run a 10k, and it's going to be amazing. And you cross that finish line, and you're on this high, and you're like, I did it, I, I did it. And then a day goes by. And another day goes by and like you're still kind of following your routine but now there's not really a purpose to your routine mm -hmm. and so naturally yeah you're going to come down you're going to hit a low mm -hmm. you've been working towards this visual this picture this goal this behag and you hit it and now there's nothing well what now where do you sit now and i think this is a really important time to reflect i think it's a really important time to look at opportunities or our successes or accomplishments and it's time to take it to the next step Maybe it's another 10K race, or maybe it's like a full marathon or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Maybe now you're going to go on, you're going to backpack around Europe for two months, you know? So I think achieving the goal, fantastic, and then taking it to the next level. So whether it be something along the same lines or something completely different. If you're that type of person where you can like do all kinds of different things, amazing, good for you. Or if it's something, this is your constant fitness goal, keep it fitness related or professional related or financial related, whatever it may be. Now keep in mind too, I would hope, right, in my mind, I would think you would have three or four goals kind of along the way. Mm. So now you can start bumping up those goals. Maybe those goals take priority until there's a new behag that falls into place, whatever that may be. 
Does that make sense? So you're saying stack, like, like have a few goals that you're working on on top of one another. Absolutely. You have your short term, oh. you have your long term. I'm, I'm, I'm very, Don't I'm be very, overwhelmed. I'm, no, no, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm, I'm a very focused person where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm obsessed with right now. And then I'm going to get obsessed with something else, which, which is something that scares me. It, it, deep down, it scares me. It's like right now I'm obsessed with fitness. I'm seeing results in fitness. I'm worried in a year or two I won't be obsessed with it. And I'll just go back to the way I used to be. And so, so like learning to, be, to stay on maintenance mode or obsessed with this and be able to have time or focus for another obsession um, is something that, I, that I'm going to challenge myself to be able to do. Great, and I love that. We'll see now you just said again, you're challenging yourself. <laughs> you're making yourself that bigger, better person, right? I'm trying, Neil, I'm trying. No, no, no. you're doing. <laughs> I'm doing, there you go. Mark, I think that's really cool. I think you should be really proud of yourself. I think that's really cool. We'll see what happens. Well, I'll be there with you. Come on now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so, here's, so here's the last circling around on, on these goals. Is this caliper, 10% body fat? Is this, it's specific, but how do we know it's appropriate? Like, I, I don't know, like, like I want to look good, but I don't, I don't even know, like, I just picked a random number. Fair, absolutely. So, when it, so anytime that you're coming down to uh, something health-related, the best advice you can get is from a doctor. It's the best advice you can get. Doctor, this is my goal. I'm working with a trainer. I eat this. I do this. I exercise this amount of times, this long every day. I want to achieve 10% body fat. Is this for my, my BMI? Is this for my body type something that's very obtainable or appropriate for me? Is this something mm -hmm. that I can achieve and maintain? Or is this going to be something I'm going to do, have a sick photo shoot, and then I'll be sitting at like a 12, 13% body fat on average, right? Mm -hmm. I, the doctor is the best person to go to. I always say to anyone who comes into the gym, pregnancies, uh, injuries, I always ask, are you cleared by your doctor to be here? But so now you need to find a doctor, though. So, you know, ketosis, like keto diet and falling into ketosis is, you know, only three or four years into studies, even though people have been doing it for 20 years. Yep. Um, there, you know, when you start to get into this stuff, there are, there are more traditional thinking people who – would probably suggest that like intermittent fasting isn't healthy or, you know, like I'm not, you know, getting enough of the Canadian food guide of whatever. Right. Right. So, so I guess you have to seek out in this case, and this applies to any goal, you have to decide who you're going to listen to, I suppose. Cause you're going to, there's going to be all these naysayers and all these people who just, who, who don't want from their point of view, they think your goal is dangerous or silly or stupid or ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to turn to a doctor and say, Hey, I want your guidance or help with this. I mean, they got to be able to align with, with what I want to do. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, when it comes down to your body fat, it's, I don't think diet, is even an equation into that conversation. I think it's just for my age and my body type and my gender, am I able to achieve this type of body fat percentage? Mm -hmm. I know it's obtainable. Now, is it obtainable to you? I don't know your health history. I don't know the health history from your family. That's why mm -hmm. you want to get a doctor involved, right? Okay. Just, just assume awesome. It. Just awesome. Every level. Every level is awesome. Every level is awesome? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, though, on the flip side, if you go ahead and you achieve the goal and you actually hit 10% body fat, you can look at yourself in the mirror and be like, ooh, this, this is like a little too much. Maybe I don't, maybe I want to put like a little bit more on or maybe mm. take a little bit more off, right? You will mm. know, at the end of the day, you'll know. But from a health factor, I think it's important to have a doctor involved. Okay. Okay, is that fair to say? Yeah, I don't like doctors. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. There, were, yeah. there, were, there, there were a bunch of years, I think I've gotten a physical once, and there were a bunch of years that Jacqueline was bugging me for physical. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not healthy enough that I want that like mark down on paper. And then I turned to her two weeks ago and I went, you know what? I feel like I'm fit enough now that I'll go get that physical because like I'm ready for them to write everything down and chart it. Yeah. And she's like, I don't think you need one now. I think you're actually healthy enough that you don't need a physical. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so, yeah. nice. so did you go? No. no. Well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't trust people very much. So I don't, I also don't trust doctors very much. And I know that's bad that's because they're, they're professionals who are very well trained and have the best of intentions. But, you know, I, I don't trust 
dentists. I don't trust doctors. I don't trust mechanics. All of them I consider just out to get me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, no, no, no. I'll do it yeah. myself, thanks. Yes. <laughs> right? Well, that, and it goes to say, if, if something gets screwed up, who are you going to be mad at? You're going to be mad yes. at yourself. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah, I respect that. I do. I love it. So what's, what's your big, scary, crazy goal that you're working on then? So my BHAG is I want to compete. I am going to compete in a fitness competition, not this spring, the following spring. So 2021. Okay. You're going to compete in a fitness competition. Correct. And why will it take that long for you to do it if you're a, like, I'm going to do it now kind of person? So, I mean, I can easily, I can go to the gym, I can like put some mass on and then I can drop some body fat and then I can go compete. But my trainer and a friend of mine said to me, he's also in the process of his own competitions. And he said to me, why would you go on stage just to compete when you can bring something, when you can work, when you can put more time into it, you can bring an even better package to the stage. Not necessarily to place, but for own personal satisfaction. And I really appreciated that because I said, to myself, well, absolutely. Like, I don't want to go on the stage for my first show and feel stupid or feel that, you know, I'm looking, and, like, and it's, again, respect to the other athletes on the stage, I want to be able, I want to know when I step on that stage, this is the best that I can bring for now. And then I start to see what's going to happen in the future. Mm. Do you disagree or do you agree? Mm. Oh. So... <clears throat> Progress over perfection, man. Progress over perfection. Yeah. So, because my immediate reaction is, why not do both? Why not prove to yourself that you can be ready for this knowing that you're not where you want to be and still have the feeling and still have the experience and still get rid of the jitters and still get, because you're, you're probably going to screw up the first time you do it anyway. So, so why build up in your mind this perfect specimen, this perfect package, this perfect opportunity, and then when you get there, you trip and fall or do something silly or make a uh, mistake. Knock on wood, Mark. Knock on wood. Wood everywhere. Wood everywhere. Here. Oh, oh. there you go. <laughs> so, but, 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 so my, my immediate reaction is both. Is both. Like, like get your 10,000 hours in. Like, like, get, get, like, do both. But I, I also then don't want to tell you that because I understand, like, like, yeah, you want to you wanna be proud of what you're putting up there. Mm. But think how proud you'll be of showing up knowing that you're not ready yet. Won't that make you proud? No? I mean, it's definitely a component. That, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, on the flip side, too, and this is going to be very, very honest, it's also even from a financial standpoint. They're just the competitions are just so expensive that for that's... me to invest money into a show, me feel kind of like, mm. No, that, that, that is totally different. That, that's a reason that I can get on board with. Okay. Right? Like, I, like I, have, I have a goal that, like, I want to ride a dirt bike from one ocean in America to the other ocean in America. And there's a trail that people put together. It takes 40 to 50 days of you just camping and backpacking and taking these trails. And you go from North Carolina to, I think, California. So one day you're in the mountains. The next day you're in the desert. And I'm like, I love it. I've had this idea for 10 years. Now, I could go right now and do it. Like, I, I could say, Jacqueline, I'm off. <laughs> Kids, see yeah. you later. See you, business. I'm putting it on hold. I, I, have, <laughs> I could make it happen right now. Time, I can make it happen. I could figure out the money. I could do it all. But, but for me, I would be sacrificing too much. Like, I'd be asking too much of my wife. I'd be spending too much time away from the kids. It would hurt the business too much. And I don't know if I want to spend the money on it right now. But in five years, maybe, you know, like, so, so it's one of those things where I, I, I get it. I get it where you go. I could go to the competition and I could then do it the next time, but is it worth the sacrifice? And so I think that's a, actually, I think that's a good reason. That's a better reason than you, than you wanting to be perfect. Tuesday. Thank you. By the wow. way, whenever you do this, whenever you do this adventure, I kind of want to come with you. This is really cool. <laughs> do you ride? Hey, Jackie, do, you, do you ride? Do you ride motorcycle? Uh, well, it's funny. That is one of my short-term goals. I want to yeah. get my M license. Yes, I did it yeah. two years ago. Uh, two or three years ago, I did it because I was terrified, and I and and I was yeah, I was really scared that a car was going to hit me. I was really scared of drivers. Um, and then I did it and I loved it. And then I'm even thinking about selling my, my bike because I'm just like, it's just lost the, 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 it's not scary anymore. It's just, you overcame that fear. Yeah. yeah. 
It yeah. is scary. Look, it's play, I have the manual. I've read it a couple of times. I just need to go take the test. Right, the test. Even like, it's funny that even when I'm on the highway or drive, not so much now because it's winter, but during the summer, I, I love watching motorcycles. And I think to myself, like, how cool would that feel? But then yes. I also think to myself, what if someone, like, bumped the back of the bike? Yeah. Like, how bad would that be? You know? Yeah, there's a reason that bikers are so aggressive. You got you to gotta keep yourself alive. Okay. Well, uh, Neil, how can people find you? What's the best way to, to find you, to reach out to you, to stay in touch with you? Yeah, so I mean, the best way to get in touch with me would be through Instagram, so at NeilTastic, or if it's fitness related, at NeilTastic.fitness. Um, and then from there, I also have a link to my website. My mm -hmm. email is there. And if you have mm -hmm. questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to talk goals, talk fitness. If you just want to say hi, or if you want to talk motorcycles and BMWs, hello. Or Jeeps, or Jeeps. Or, Neil, okay. Neil's I a Jeeper. A Jeep. I'm in the process of getting another Jeep, which I'm so excited about. Are you? Yeah. So I went last night and signed some papers, so... Hopefully, I get my, my, my 2020 Jeep, my Jeep Wrangler. What color? Black? Mark. Yes, of course. Black oh, black. I, I love the green one. You know, you know the green color that's out right now? The, like the lime green? Yeah. yeah. It's like it, weird, it's, froggy, limey kind of green. Yeah, so and there's much. this like mermaid teal Jeep out there as well. It's kind of pretty. Not really yeah. my style, but it's nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Neil. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do to kick my ass most mornings. And thank you for your time, man. Thank you. This was a lot of fun.